If you're considering moving to Austin, but you have not really explored the city in person, it's really important to figure out which part of town is the right match for you, whether it's the north side, the south, the east, or the west. There's big differences in the style of homes, the activities that surround the areas, and also in the topography of the land itself. In this video, I'm gonna break down some key differences between East Austin and West Austin. So Austin is divided east and west by a highway I-35 that runs right up and down the middle. Now when you live here, one of the first things you realize is that you never want to drive on I-35 because of the horrible traffic, so you quickly learn all the back roads to get around town. Now what some people also don't realize is that there is a big fault line, the Balcones fault line that runs right along that same area. It actually kind of goes across the middle of Texas and Austin is right in the center of it. Now don't be scared by the term fault line. This is an inactive fault line that hasn't moved in probably millions upon millions of years, but it did completely change the topography of the land. So on the east side of town, what you'll see is more farmland, prairie lands, and then it turns into the coastal plains. And so it's pretty flat if you drive from Austin out to Houston. That's why the airport is built on the east side of town, much easier to land a plane there. Big factories like the Tesla factory is also out on the east side of town because there's no way you could have built a building that big if it was in the hill country. So to the west of this fault line is the Texas Hill Country. It is big, beautiful rolling hills, um, lakes, rivers. It's very green and it has tons of parks. Some of the most spectacular parts of Texas are in the hill country. And it's a pretty big area. It extends past Austin out into Fredericksburg, Kerrville, bunch of little towns out that way and we love to go out there just for day trips and to explore some of the natural beauty and parks out that direction. Now some differences also are in the soil. On the east side of town the soil is good for farmland, it's going to be a little bit softer, have more clay in it, so you are also a little more prone to have foundation problems on the east side of town. It's not a guarantee and not a reason to not buy over there, but just something to keep in mind if you're buying an older resale home, definitely check out the foundation to make sure it's still good. And if you're getting a new home, make sure it's well built and that you actually take care of your foundation to protect it. On the west side of town, there's less soil and more rock. In fact, a lot of times, like on our home, we actually had to have a dump truck come in and bring soil because we were pretty much on bare rock when we were building our home less likely to have foundation issues because you're on solid limestone for the most part. Again, there's no guarantee though. Always make sure that your foundation was well built and get it inspected. Cost of building a pool or even planting a tree is going to be a lot more expensive too because you're gonna have to jackhammer and really cut into the stone in order to get a decent sized hole to put in a pool. People are sometimes shocked at how much pools cost but for just a basic splash pool, I'd estimate at least 100,000 or so. And if you wanted a more significant luxury pool, the price is gonna go way up from there. Along with that, house prices are going to vary quite a bit from the east side to the west side. The west part of Austin, especially around Terrytown, Westlake Hills, Rollingwood, those are some of the most expensive parts of the city, and it extends out that way towards Lake Travis. There's some beautiful luxury homes out there overlooking the lake. To give you an idea, I just did a screenshot of a search for homes that are 1.5 million and up around Austin, and you can see that almost all of them are out on the west side of town. Here's another screenshot of a different search. This is looking for homes that are under 450 in Austin. And as you can see, almost all of them are on the east side of town. Now, those are just two extreme examples. You can get home prices anywhere between any of those amounts, but I just wanna show you that if you're looking at a lower budget, uh, median home value in Austin's about 550 or so. So if you're wanting to shop way below that, the east side is going to have way more options for you, even going north and south to Buta Kyle or up to Pflugerville, Round Rock, Hutto. 
Um, it's just better opportunities and it's easier, cheaper to build because the land's a little bit flatter. On the west side to get you know a basic starter home out in the Lake Travis area, you're gonna spend probably 600,000 or so. If you're closer into town in the Westlake area, 600,000 may just get you a basic condo, you know, two beds, couple of baths. So your money goes a lot farther on the east side. Now there are some luxury communities out there um, like the Colony and Bastrop has some really high-end homes. There are some newer developments like Easton Park, Whisper Valley, out in Maynard that have some beautiful master plan communities, but you can still get a really great home for well under a million, and it's just bringing more options and different styles and price points to the east side. Now east downtown, you can definitely find some really cool modern contemporary design homes built into older neighborhoods where maybe someone bought an older home, took it down, and then built a big, beautiful modern home. There's really cool restaurants and just an awesome culture for art, music, and entertainment on the east side, which a lot of people love. And whenever we meet with new clients, we always try to figure out three things. Where do you want to live, work, and play? Live means the style of home that you're looking for. Do you want a huge house, a small house? What's your budget? The second is where are you going to work? Because commute times in Austin can be really extreme. So we wanna make sure that if you have to drive into downtown or to the airport or something on a frequent basis, that you're not going to hate having a really long commute. And then the third thing is where do you wanna play? What kind of lifestyle do you want? Do you love being on a golf course? Do you like being in the heart of the city with a highly walkable area? Do you like being out in the suburbs? So once we kind of get a feel for what you're looking for, it is so much easier to narrow down some neighborhoods and that's where the fun begins because you can truly start to discover where you want to find your home in Austin. As always, we'd love to hear your thoughts on this video. Drop a comment or question below. Thank you.